still, I still can't believe it because I remember just being a homeless child, living in children's shelters, living from home to home. I mean, being in the homes where I was abused. I mean, being in home, bad homes, good homes, and and then I'm here at. I went from you know from from the foster house to the White House. So it's just unbelievable, but that's, but this is America. It's the American dream that no matter where you come from, no matter, uh, you don't have to come from a royal family to make it in this world, especially not, well, not in America. You can come from the bottom and, and rise to the, to the top. You can hang with the big dogs, you know? Just what prompted Terrence K. Williams to become an ardent supporter of President Trump? What is his upcoming comedy show, The Deplorables on Broadway, all about? And how is it he went from a childhood with an absent father, drug addict mother, and an array of foster parents, to an audience with President Trump at the White House? This is American Thought Leaders, and I'm Yanya Kellick. Today we sit down with Twitter personality Terrence K. Williams, a conservative actor and comedian. His show, The Deplorables on Broadway, will be premiering in New York City Wednesday, November 6th. Terrence K. Williams, wonderful to have you on American Thought Leaders. Thank you for having me on. So Terrence, um, gosh, where to start? I mean, you are a, I don't know if I can say, wild and passionate, passionate supporter of President Trump. And I'm wondering if you could just tell me, you know, how, how this, how this uh, intensity all began. <laughs> Well, first of all, he needs all of our support because the left is coming at him so strong. But I've been a Trump supporter since day one. When he came down those escalators, I was on his team from that day. I mean, and I knew the man, I knew the man was going to do the things that he said he was going to do. So he had my support from day one. I know real when I see real because I'm real. So I said, this man has my support. And I don't care. And I don't care how he talk, how he walk. I don't care if it's not presidential. If you think it's not presidential, I don't care about that. I don't, people say, oh, well, I don't like his personality. I'd rather have a, a good president that did, I, I'd rather have a good president than a president with a good personality. Obama had a great personality, but he was a horrible president. I don't want that. So if you don't think Trump's personality is good, great, then oh well. But he's a good president. That's all that matters at the end of the, at the, end of the day. So from your perspective, what are some of the, the, the good things that the president is doing? Well, f well number one, the things, that he are, the things that he's doing for the black community means a lot to me things that I thought Obama was going to do, but he didn't do, because I was like, you know, Obama's the first black president. I mean, the, the black community is about to rise to the top. But Obama ran the black community down to the ground. Now, President Trump, and the, the report is out, uh, black unemployment is at an all-time low, an historic low. I mean, it's low from the day they started taking notes, you know, record, be, 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 from the time that they started recording things, it's at an all-time record low. And then the First Step Act, his First Step Act has freed over 7,000 prisoners. About 91% of those prisoners are, were, were black. So, I mean, President Trump is, they call the man a racist, but the man is doing, I mean, why would a racist sign an act like the First Step Act to free thousands of black people? Why would a racist president put black people to work? And they're not working for free, they're getting paid. So they're not slaves. Why would he do that if he's a racist president? So, I mean, it doesn't get any, any better than that. And he said he was gonna do that and he did it. Now the Democrats, they have been running the black community for years. I mean, years. Some of them, that been run, they've been in office like 30 years and they've been, claiming they've been working hard for the black community, but Trump has done more in just a couple years than they have done in like 20 years. So the man has my support, and I don't, I don't care what people think about his personality. I don't care what he say on TV. I don't care who he tell to shut up. I don't care. I voted for him to do the things he said he was going to do and to put America first. So that's all that matters to me at the end of, of the day. So, you know, you're here in New York uh, yeah. for an event, uh, uh, Deplorables on Broadway. Oh, yes. You know, it's sort of a, a, a very, very interesting title. Yeah, Deplorables uh, on Broadway. It's happening, you know, this coming Wednesday. Uh, and t tell me, what, what is this all about? Yeah, so uh, we, it's Deplorables on Broadway. We're doing a show November 6th. 
uh, and the show will be benefiting the Folded Flag Foundation, and and, uh, and that that foundation uh, they help out children of our fallen heroes, such as our soldiers and emergency responders. So I'm happy to do that, especially helping out the children in need, because I was once a child in need because I grew up in foster care. So this means a lot to me. So people can come out, get a good laugh, and also be a part of something great. So you're going to be doing, you know, comedy. Of course, this is yeah. one of the oh, things yes. that, that, that you do. Oh, yes, Deplorable yeah. on Broadway. You know, and I'm thinking we should have called it Despicable Deplorables on Broadway. Oh, boy. Because Cory Booker called us Despicables. Uh, such, uh, uh, he called Trump supporters dis Despicables. So I, was, I said, dang, I should have called it Despicable Deplorables on Broadway. But, uh, yeah, so it's going to be comedy. And, yes, you're going to hear some Trump stuff in there. So don't come if you don't want to hear his name. And I'm not bashing them, so if you don't want to hear anything positive, then you might as well stay at home. Well, I, I heard there's been quite a lot of interest. I mean, New York isn't known to be, you know, the, the bastion oh, of yeah. Trump support or oh, something Oh, yeah. Like when, when I announced I was coming to New York City, the poor was on Broadway, the, the, the loony liberals, they went, I mean, their, mind, their heads exploded all over Twitter. Oh, no, you're not coming here. <laughs> oh, wh where's the venue? Let's see if we can get it shut down. It's just, it's just ridiculous. Why? Because you don't think like us. You don't belong here. Nobody in New York City wants to see you. What the loony liberals don't understand is there are conservatives everywhere. There are people that can think for, the, uh, for, for themselves everywhere. New York City has a lot of conservatives. You might not, I mean, you won't notice them because they're not wearing their red hats out, you know, uh, because, of course, they don't want to get violated. So, but they're there. You know, so when we come to places like the East Coast, people don't come to the shows and, and make America great again and stuff because they can't walk down the street with that. You got to walk everywhere in New York City. So, but they come in dressed like the man in black, you know, but <laughs> they got to be in disguise. Very, very interesting. Yeah. And so, wait, wait, who else? You're not, you're not there alone. Who else yeah, is so part I'm of with, it? Uh, so um, the legendary musician Robert Davi and a comedian named Steve McGrew. Uh, uh, both both of those guys are, will be a part of the show. Awesome talent. And uh, aside from comedy, I guess we'll see a bit of music. We'll see. Yeah, a little bit of music. And Steve McGrew, he's a country guy, mm -hmm. so he's like you know he's like kind of like a redneck almost. <laughs> yeah, so. Pretty pretty yeah. pretty interesting. So yeah. we'll 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 put up the the link. It's uh, I think. Yeah yeah they can get the yeah they can Google deplorables on Broadway, Broadway or go to TerenceKWilliams.com. And you find it there easier if you just type in deplorables on Broadway. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, you mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, you had actually been in foster care as yes. a kid. I think, I think I had read it was for 15 years, so quite a substantial portion of your life. Yes. You're not 30 yet, right? So it's no, like more I, than half of your life. Right? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm 28, so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's yeah. getting there. Yeah, I'm yeah. getting there. Oh, Lord I, Jesus. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, you were actually, you know, I think maybe a month ago or a month and a half, something like this, you were actually, you know, welcomed at the White House and the president yeah, singled it, you out yeah. um, at an event. And so, but where you started was a very, very different place. Yeah, and I'm still blown away by that because I was just thinking to myself, like, and I was in foster care from, I mean, I, I remember starting kindergarten in, in, in foster care, being, being in somebody's foster home and starting, you know, in kindergarten. So I'm like, I, I was in foster care at an, at an early age and been in a lot of different homes. And I never in my life, ever, ever, ever thought I would be at the White House. The White House wasn't even on my mind, mm -hmm. you know. The only house was on my mind was finding a new home, you know. So and it was just, it's just amazing. And I mean, I'm still like in disbelief. I still, I still can't believe it. Cause I remember just being a homeless child, living in children's shelters, living from home to home. I mean, being in homes where I was abused. I mean, being in home, bad homes, good homes. And, and then I'm here at, I went from, you know, from, from the foster house to the white house. So it's just unbelievable. But that's, look, this is America. It's the American dream that no matter where you come from, no matter, uh, you don't have to come from a royal family to make it in this world, especially not, well, not in America. You can come from the bottom and, and rise to the, to the top. You can hang with the big dogs, you know? <laughs>
So, you know, maybe could, do you mind if I ask a little bit of, a bit more about, you know, your childhood? I know oh, yes. you're from Oklahoma City, right? Yes, yes. I was born and raised in, in Oklahoma City. So, so, so how is it that, that, you know, this, you had this difficult time as, as a child? Like, what, how did things start out for you? Well, um, they, well, of course, they started out pretty bad, you know, I mean, a child without a, mo without a mother and a father. Now, my mom, she had nine of us. She had nine of us. She had us, uh, six different fathers. She was addicted to drugs. And eventually, we were going, we were back and forth. So we'd be in the foster home one day, in the shelter one day, back with my mom. She'll lose, then she'll, then they'd come pick us up because she didn't done something wrong, didn't pass a drug test. So we were just back and forth wow. and until the judge, till the family court judge took her rights away. Um, uh, especially after the time, she, she was clean for like, I think about a year or so. And the day she was supposed to come get us back, the day she was going to get us back, she decided to smoke that morning, I guess, because she thought that, well, they're not going to drug test me. You know, I've been clean for a year. We're going to pick them up in the morning. So the judge just took our rights away. And then we, be, we became wards of the, of the state. And Oklahoma became my mom and daddy. So, yeah, that's how that went. But it, 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 it was pretty hard, though. Uh, but I wouldn't take it back if I could turn back then, I would not take it back at all. Because growing up like that, going through those things has made me who I am today. I mean, I went to the White House. I'm sure not taking that back, <laughs> you know? So uh, yeah, it's great. And, and, I, and I think that foster care was great for me. I don't, if it wasn't for foster care, I don't think I would be where I'm at today. And if my mother still had her rights and we were still going through that and in and out with her, she, she was, we were living in pretty bad neighborhoods. She was addicted to drugs. And I mean, I could have turned out a drug dealer, a gang banger or anything or, or anything. So I'm glad that the judge took my mother's rights away because that judge knew that we deserved a better life. And I know it was a hard thing, but I wanted a better life. I was I was tired of going back back and forth, so I wasn't hurt at all when the judge said no more. I mean, cause I I've been in we was in and out for a long time, so I got used to it. You know, you get right. used to certain things, you get used to the pain, used to the hurt, used to the lies and all that. So I'm like, you know, it's 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 whatever. Are you still close to your siblings? There's there's nine of you. That's that's quite the family. Yes. <laughs> I talked to some of them. Uh, some some of them are in prison, uh, but the ones I I talked to some of them, the ones in prison asked for a lot of money. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, so I try not to talk so much, <laughs> but I check on to see how uh, how uh, how they're doing. But a lot of my siblings, a lot of them, you know, they didn't take the right path. You know, they felt like yeah. So, but I keep in touch uh, with them. As much as I can, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. It's it's it's, it's remarkable. Yeah. So you know, you you decided to take, as you're saying, a bit of a different path. And so you know, you obviously you had some of these foster parents, which were which were positive. That's what yes. you, that's the sense I'm getting from you here. Yes, yes. Um, and so what 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 do you credit with you taking this for? Kind of. Well, you know, some of the a lot of the foster homes I stayed in were uh, I stayed with a lot of elderly people. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think that's where I get some of my conservative values from. And of course they voted liberal, but, they, but you know, live conservative. But, um, but a lot of those were, a lot of my foster, a lot of foster homes I was in, you know, like 70 years old, you know, and, uh, 60 and stuff like that. So they, they you know, I, I really respected them and I looked up, like, I, re, I respect my elders and I look up to them. So I give a lot of credit to the elders that gave me a lot of knowledge and wisdom. Um, and I can talk to an elderly, you know, sometimes they repeat themselves like a hundred times, tell you the same story like five times. And I was never the kid to say, oh, you already told me this story. I don't want to hear it again. Mm -hmm. I always listen because sometimes you might get something new out of it. So. Um, I give I give some of those uh, people a lot of credit. Yeah, um, amazing, amazing story. So um, you know when you came to the White House, you were part of this uh, this Black Leadership Summit right. with uh, Turning Point. Um, it was October the fourth, 
And um, I didn't know I was going to be called up on stage. Um, Charlie Kirk, he's the uh, founder of Turning Point. And uh, he actually uh, he actually was the one. So I had I was able to go um, to, I was able to meet Trump in the back because of Charlie Kirk. So I think Charlie Kirk. I mean, that guy made my dreams come true. <laughs> so he was like the president. You know, you may get to meet him. He's coming in here, and so you know, when the president they told him I was there, and he said, "Well, let me meet him." So, so you you actually met him twice, once behind the scenes, yes. and then later, yes, uh -huh. you got a surprise, and I got a surprise. But I wasn't set. But I didn't know I was gonna speak on stage though. So, but I did get to meet him and shake his hand, and he was like about the realest. I mean, I was like, hey, I'm a, I'm a little man. He like six five. I'm looking at him like Santa Claus. Like, oh god, I'm looking at him like 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 the Empire State Building. Like, oh my goodness. And he was just so like, hey Terrence. He said, hey, what's up, Terrence? You know. You were talking about Deborah Messing. What's that, what is that Deborah Messing girl doing? I said, Mr. President, she's being very messy right now. And uh, he was, you know, he said, I, so I thank them, thank, thank, like, thank, thank you for everything that you're doing, blah, blah, blah. We took a picture, and I'm a, I'm a little man. So he said, ah, let's take a better picture. And he, like, stooped down a little low and took a picture <laughs> to my height to take a picture with me. And I was like, wow, the president just, stoop down to take a picture with my little old self, you know. Very, very, very yeah. interesting. So, you know, you are this prolific, prolific Twitter personality. I think I watched, I watched that video of you uh, meeting President Trump, and I think he mentions that you have 700,000 oh, yeah. followers. Uh, uh, that's, again, remarkable. Um, tell me, um, so, I, I actually, I looked at one of the one of your most recent mm -hmm. tweets, and it was just very simple. You said, all lives matter, all caps, yeah. if I recall. And well, uh, there was a guy named Common, he's a musician, and he tweeted out, black dot lives dot matter, all caps. And I responded, all dot lives dot matter caps, all in all caps, because all lives matter. I, you know, yes, black lives matter, so does, you know, the, the, the Hispanic lives matter, Asians, everybody's lives matter. And all this black life, do black, the, some of the people that say black lives matter, it, it's like they're very selective on when they feel like a black life matter. Like they only speak about a black life when it's involved with a police officer, a white police officer and a black person or if a white man uh, uh, attacks a, a black person, whether it was self-defense or not, they don't care. They don't care. And, but why don't y'all, if black lives matter, why don't you speak up when, thou, when hundreds of kids get gunned down in Chicago, black kids, three-year-old little girl shot in the head, nothing. And not on CNN, not on MSNBC, all the black lives matter activists, they're quiet, they're tweeting about uh, eating double cheeseburgers. Did y'all not hear about this story about this little black girl that got shot? About that little black boy? Y'all tweeting about everything else. But let it be some grown man that tried to rob the store and he gets shot by a white police officer and then people ride in the streets. Well, they didn't have to shoot him. They could have tased him or sprayed him with a water gun or something. No, the man had a gun and he robbed the store and pistol whipped somebody. He didn't care about that person's life in that store when he had when he pulled that gun out, but they will show up for stuff like and I, and then here comes Al Sharpton. Here comes Al Sharpton because he see dollar signs. He don't see dollar signs when a little kid gets shot by by a gang member because he can't sue anybody. He can't sue the gang bank ain't got no money. He don't even file his taxes. He sell dope, so Al Sharpton can't make no money off that. But he can sure make money if a police officer is involved. He can try to sue the city and get the family all riled up and CNN all riled up and get the black community all riled up and try to make a couple bucks. And then he gone until the next person gets shot by a police officer. So you think it's highly, highly selective, basically? Oh, highly selective. I know it's selective. I know it's selective. 
And I think the whole world knows it. They don't say anything when these young kids are 100. Every time they release an article, Chicago Times, Chicago, whatever, I'll, uh, they release an article, uh, 100 people shot over the weekend in Chicago. I said, ooh, well, let me go to the Black Lives Matter page, see what they're talking about. Let me go to, why, what, they ain't tweet today? They ain't even been on today, you know? And so it's, it is selective, even with the mainstream media. They don't talk about that. Why don't they talk about that for two weeks? Let some white kid go in a uh, Walmart, if a white kid, like the white kid, oh, if a white kid shoot up about five people, oh, it's all, it's on the new, they won't stop talking about it for three weeks. It's, I mean, it's, it's on every single day. But a hundred black people shot in Chicago, it's nothing, it's silent. It's very interesting, you know, actually, um, Heather McDonald, who I had on the show a little while ago, was kind of describing this type of phenomenon, it's just, it's kind of, stunning because it, it is a it is a, in itself a kind of racism from her perspective yeah right. it's it, it's i mean and I'm, I'm i'm just sick of it so when i hear black lives matter i'm like no all lives matter why don't y'all talk about black people are not the only ones that are victims of uh, uh i mean you i've seen i've 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 seen videos where police officers beat up a wrongfully beat on a white man wrongfully beat on some Hispanic guy or, 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 or an, an Asian guy. What's the difference between, what, what, what is the difference if a police officer beats on a black person and beats on a white person? They both people, they both living human beings. What's the difference? There's no difference, we all bleed red. You know, you mentioned a couple of, you know, policies of the presidents that, that you really appreciate. The, yeah. Sort of this kind of, yeah, cratered unemployment uh, in the black community, actually in many communities, but especially the black community, um, and also the criminal justice reform. Yes. Um, is there, is there, are there, are there any other policies that are particular? That, that I mean, Trump's, <clears throat> first of all, and it's not just, what, I'm just not happy just about black unemployment. I just put that out there. Unemployment, period, is at an all time low, period, for everybody, for everybody. From Trump's opportunity zones, I mean the things that he, and his uh, his tax plan is phenomenal. My Uber and Lyft drivers, if some of them they might have saw me on Twitter or something, they say, "Oh, you can." They say some of them say I've heard some of them say. Uh, I was, matter of fact, I was in Dallas and one of my Uber drivers, he was he was, uh, he was a black guy. He said, "Oh, you a Trump supporter?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "Man, I don't like that dude. I don't like his personality." But his tax plan is helping out out my family. And I don't like I don't, I don't like his character, but I like what he's doing, and I want him to have I want him to get four more years because that means that's four more years that I can help my family out more. That's that, that, that's, that's that's four more years of extra money that I get back on my taxes. That's four more years that I can put extra food in my baby's mouth. So. I gotta respect the man for that, but I don't like his personality. And that's great. He said, and he, you know, he said, I, I loved Obama's personality, but <laughs> he didn't do anything he said he was gonna do, you know? I see. So. The wall, yeah. the, I mean, immigrant, uh, yes. Uh, uh, um, uh, putting America first, putting our American children first, and not putting our American people first, and not the illegals. That is very important. Building that wall uh, um, uh, so, and uh, uh, um, getting rid of these illegals. Like it was a plant in Mississippi. They had a bunch of illegals there. And my, 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 my favorite, my favorite department came in KK Ice. That's my, that's, that's my favorite. Uh, they are some of my favorites. I love Ice. They came through and got rid of all of those illegals. And the next week, a whole bunch of black people lined up for job opportunities at that plant. A whole bunch of Americans lined up. That right there is putting America first. We're going to finish up shortly. And I, I'm telling so what, how long are you in town? So I'm in town for about, I'm in town for probably, I was gonna leave on Saturday, but I might leave on Friday. Uh, I gotta get out of New York City. 
it's crazy here. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're, and you have one show coming? Yes, yes. So, are yeah. there, are there any other plans? Well, I, I have the show, the, uh, the Deplorables on Broadway, and uh, that's really it for this year. But next year, in January, I'm, uh, I'm supposed to be going to Phoenix doing a show, and I'm going to be doing more and more cities. So, uh, yeah, so, pe and people that follow me on my Twitter, at Terrence K. Williams, they can find out more about that. Um, I'll be sending out updates all the time, so. Oh, wonderful. It's, uh, and helping the president get reelected, so, you know, that's part of my mission, too. <laughs> Got to get this man reelected. Well, Terrence K. Williams, so great to have you. Thank you, brother, so much. Appreciate it.